So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to calculate the streak for all of these stocks. We're going to find the winning streaks, so the amount of consecutive days the stock has gone up, and also the losing streaks. What I have in my database so far is a list of all of the different stock symbols and the basic stock information. And we also have historical data for all of the stocks. So we have the closing prices um, from very recently all the way until the stock's inception. We've already seen in a previous video in this series how we could download all of that historical data. And what I'm going to show you in a future video is how I extracted all of that from the CSV files and insert it into the database. However, I'm going to leave that for a future video and I'm just going to jump ahead here and show you how you can calculate um, the streaks for this application. So right now this app is online at stockstreaks.com. However, you'll see the streak here is showing zero for all of the different stocks. So what we're going to do in this video is look at the code in order to calculate these streaks and then insert it to the database. The script that I'm going to use to do this is going to be run over the command line. I'm using Laravel for the PHP framework for this app. And there's a really nice feature of Laravel which is called Artisan. And you can create your own custom Artisan commands that can be run over the command line. So it's a nice helpful wrapper for running PHP over the command line. And I'm going to show you how easy it is um, to create a basic Artisan command. So if I go over to the command line for a second and I type PHP Artisan, um, we can see all of the different Artisan commands that come by default with Laravel. And you can also see the custom one I've added here at the bottom, SS. And the command is called SS Update Streaks. SS stands for Stock Streaks, the name of my app. And the description is it's going to update the stock streaks. So let me show you how easy it is to create these custom Artisan commands. We're just going to go over to the code here, and within my app folder, inside the start folder, we have this file artisan.php, and the first thing I'm going to do is register my artisan command, and we can do that with artisan add, and then I'm passing in um, the name of my command, which is called update streaks. So that's all we have to do in this file. The next place that we're going to go is, again, within the app folder, in the commands folder, I now have this new file update streaks. Um, the class is called update streaks, the same as what I passed um, within artisan.php. And there's only a couple of different things I needed to do here. Um, we're going to set the name to our artisan command, so protected name is set to ss update streaks. And then I'm going to give a simple description here, which is update the stock streaks. Now, by default in Laravel, when your artisan command is run, what it's going to do is Laravel is going to run this fire function. And all I'm doing here is I'm instantiating my storing controller and then I'm running the store streaks method. So this is a nice way that you can run methods of your controllers without accessing in the browser. And that's going to be really handy for long running processes such as what I'm doing now. So if we take a look at that store streaks method, um, you'll see it right here within the controller. And we're just doing a whole bunch of procedural stuff here. We're getting a list of all our symbols, we're looping over them, and then we're calculating the streak. The last thing you're going to want to do in this file is go down to the get arguments function and just change the input argument from require to optional. So if your command does not take any arguments, you can just set this to optional and it's going to work just fine. By the way, Laravel has built-in generators for all of this code. So all you're going to need to do is go over to your command line and type php artisan command colon make and then give a, give a name to your command. Let's just call it test. And I'll hit enter there. You'll see command was created successfully. And if I go back over to my code here, um, within the commands folder, you'll na now see this test.php. And it has all this boilerplate for us. And you're just going to need to update the fields that I just mentioned. So you can see why creating these artisan commands is going to be really helpful. Because things like update streaks is going to be run daily. We're going to want to update those streaks every day after the stock exchange closes. So we're going to want to have some nice Linux commands that we can run with the cron. Um, supposing your app is in a folder, let's just call it app folder. And so this is where our Laravel application is stored. And then within here, there's going to be the artisan file that comes with all uh, Laravel installations, artisan. And then we're just going to put in our command here. Ours was ss update streaks. And if you ran that with a cron, um, it's going to run all of the code that we just had. So let's just look briefly now at the code in order to calculate the streaks. 
I'm going over to my storing controller here and we have this store streaks method. The first thing I'm doing is I'm creating the date. I just want it in YMD format. This is just for some record keeping. So after I've stored one of the streaks, um, at, at the end of it, after I've stored that streak, what I'm doing is within my stocks table, I'm finding that symbol and I'm doing an update here. The first thing I'm updating is what was the streak's value. So if a stock was going up seven days in a row, we're going to store that here. And then I also have a field called streak stored. And what I'm going to store here is the date in that YMD format. And that's going to let me know that, you know, if today is June 17, um, I've already updated the streak for today. I'm keeping a record of that here. We're going to set this to June 17. So if this script failed in the middle for some reason, um, the next time I run the script, um, it's going to realize that we've already updated the streak um, for a particular stock. And then it's just going to pick up um, where it left off. So anytime you're running some procedural code that is looping over thousands of stocks or tens of thousands of stocks, or if you're updating your database with thousands of records, there's a very high chance that the script is going to fail in the middle. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do some record keeping along the way of all of the achievements you have, um, all of the streaks that we've stored in this case. So we're going to take note of that and when it does fail and we run it again, we're just going to pick up where we left off. So let's just go up to the top here. After we've stored that date variable, what we're going to do is we're going to select all of the different symbols from the database. I'm ordering it by the symbol in ascending order. One important thing to mention here is because what is returned by this select statement is going to have thousands of rows. You're going to want to do your best to keep this um, result set as small as possible. So don't do a select star if you don't need all of the fields. In my case, I only need this symbol, so I'm just selecting uh, that symbol field. The next thing I'm doing is I'm looping over all of the different stocks. And the first thing we're going to check is if we have already stored the streak for one of the stocks on a previous run of this script. So what I'm doing here is I'm checking my stocks table um, where the symbol is equal to the one that's being iterated on and where streak stored is equal to the current date. So if we've already stored that, um, the very next line here is if we had a truthy value there, so if we return something, we're just going to continue immediately and go to the next iteration of this loop and we're not going to do anything about that stocks because we've already stored the streak for it. However, if we had no returned here and we haven't stored the streak yet, we're going to continue on within the streak. And the next table that we're dealing with is the summaries table. Um, this table currently has 20 million different rows and it has a history of the closing prices for all of the different stocks from the NASDAQ, NYSE, or the Amex exchanges. I'm going to show you this table in a future video and how you can update that um, with all of those um, different closing prices. But just for this video, um, we're going to be working with this table. We're selecting the closing price. And really important here, I'm ordering it by the date. So we're going to want to have the most recent dates um, at the top of the script. So what this collection is going to return is all of those closing prices. It's going to have the most recent dates at the top. And I'm also limiting this by 20. This is really important here. Um, it's very unlikely that a stock is going to have a winning or a losing streak more than 20 in a row. And some of these stocks have thousands of different closing prices for each one. So we're just going to want to limit that to 20 for each one. So what we're going to have in this days variable here is going to be a collection of one of the stocks um, most recent 20 stock prices. After that we're just initiating the streak, um, setting it to zero, and then we're going to loop over all of those different closing prices. So the way this loop works is we're always checking the day before and comparing that to the current day that we're looping on. So the first thing we need to do is we need to check if that previous day is even set. If it's not set, then we know we're at the earliest day um, for that stock, so we're just breaking out of this loop, and we know that the streak is finished. The next check that we're doing is we're checking if the previous day's closing price was equal to the current day's closing price, if that was the case, then the price was just unchanged over those two days. So we're not going to have a winning or a losing streak in that case. So we're breaking again out of this loop and the streak is over. The next check that we're doing here is we're setting checking if i is equal to zero. 
So the first thing we're going to want to check here is if the current day's closing price was greater than the day before it. If that was the case, then we're doing streak plus plus and then we're continuing to the next iteration. Likewise, if the current day's price was less than the day before it, then we're doing streak minus minus and again continuing to the second iteration of this loop. So for example, on the first iteration of this loop, if the stock's closing price was $32 and the day before it, it was $31, we're going to do this street plus plus. We're going to loop over this again. And the next time we're going to, we're going to go past this because i is not equal to zero. So let's just scroll down here. And if this streak is greater than zero, that means on the first day it was going up. Um, we're going to come in here and we're checking if the current day's close was less than the day before it, um, then we know the streak is over, we're breaking. If not, we're incrementing the streak again and we're going to the next iteration. I realize it's hard to follow the code in a video sometimes, so what I'm also going to do for this video is I'm going to attach within the description a link where you can see the gist for this file. If we go down to the bottom here, um, once we've finished calculating the streak for one of the stocks, um, within the stocks table, we're finding that symbol and then we're updating the streak to the streak that we just calculated and then we're also updating streak stored to the current date um, so we have some record keeping we've already stored that stock for today so if the script fails the next time we run it um, we're not going to do anything with that stock again and we're just going to pick up where we left off finally because we're running the script over the command line we're going to give ourselves some feedback with each iteration uh, I have here stored a streak of and then we're getting the streak's value for the particular symbol. So what we can do now is we can go over to the command line and we can run this script. If we look at the website for a second here, you'll see that all of those streaks are set for zero. Um, whenever I click this streak button, we're doing an Ajax request to the server and we're fetching that streak. So what we need to do now is we need to populate it with some data. So let's go over to the command line here. And because we're using Laravel and we created our artisan command, what I can type here um, from within the root of my project folder, we're going to type php artisan ss and then we're going to call update streak and I'll hit enter. And you'll see that all of these streaks are being stored right now. Uh, we have some negative values, we have some positive values. And what this is doing is it's storing all of these in the database. Um, I'm not going to wait for all of this to finish, it's probably um, going to need just a couple minutes. But if we go over to the browser here and we click streak, um, we should we can see some of those streaks now. We see some losing streaks up to minus six. If we click it again, um, we'll see this this one stock APPY um, has a streak of nine. So that's going to keep on going until it gets uh, to the end of it. It's at C right now, so it's just going to need a couple more minutes. So I think you can see the big advantage of doing these long-running processes over the command line now.